Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am back with the final discussion. I think people that are watching this and that have read further on will know that this carries on. Um, but I'm going to say that this is going to wrap up the trilogy of A Court of Thorns and Roses and I'm going to do my review today of A Court of Wings and Ruin. This is the third book. I am aware that there's another one which is A Court of Frost and Starlight or something like that. Um, and then obviously that's like a, it's like 250 pages long and then we then go into A Court of Silver Flames which follows a sister, Nesta, from these books, the sister of the main character. Um, so, I can't lie, I read this book, it took me a couple of weeks because it's over a 700 page book, uh, and I actually read it in book format. Sometimes I like to read on my Kindle, like you're well aware if you're watching this. Um, and I just couldn't justify spending £4.50, as much as I love reading on my Kindle, I couldn't justify spending that much money when I've got it already, uh, and I couldn't get it on my iPad on like the Libby app or anything like that. So, it took me a lot longer, but I just, I, I loved it. Um, what was I going to say? Don't know. Oh, that was it. Sorry, my brain. I'm working on about five to six hours sleep at the moment. Like, I'm really struggling with tiredness. Um, Florence is not going through a great stage, and I'm just drained. Since reading Ackermore, I have read, I think I've read two, and I'm currently working my way through another book, like my third book since reading this. I'm on a massive reading hype, and I'm just loving it i'm i'm not reading at the pace that i was like a couple of years ago reading like three books four books a week um but i'm still getting through them and i'm loving them i'm really like just in a massive reading phase at the moment so i had to quickly flick through i have written just a couple of notes um just so i don't really miss like key parts because obviously it has been a while I say a while it's been like two and a half weeks so obviously i've got no non-spoiler section for you all um i rated it if you are still watching this and you haven't read the series i rated this five star if i'm gonna do i can't even put a favorite on them well i can my favorite was the second one akamath um I loved that, like everyone. I think because it was sort of like a slow burn romance in it and you learn so much about the world and the character development and everything was so special in that one. The first one I loved, it was like setting up the scene and then I also loved this one because it was um, a lot deeper, darker, a lot more political um, with like going to war and the allies and all of that. I've never really read anything like that before. But I will say, finishing this, I do have a lot of questions that are unanswered. I felt like it was left um, sort of in a weird place, but then because apparently a lot of questions get answered in Frost and Starlight, and then obviously we then pick up the world in different characters in the next one, I don't know, but I can imagine if I finished this when this came out in, I think it was 2017, I'd, I'd be a bit pissed off and I think that would affect my rating. But because I know I've got more to come, I'm still giving it five stars. Um, there were small parts that were a bit boring, um, but that's just me and my attention span. I still loved it. We start off, really, please don't pluck the sofa, you've already ruined it enough. We start off where we left off, where Feyre is in the spring court again with Tamlin. And I really liked the dynamic of seeing her be back where she was in book one, but she's changed so much as a person and we see like her inner thoughts and how pissed she is. Um, Tamlin has sort of eased his grasp on her, I guess, um, and has started to let her do things like go and do this I don't really know what they were doing, like checking out the wall for like parts where the king can like come and like bring his armies and stuff. 
um lucian has obviously got his suspicions with her and i if you're watching this and you've, you've obviously read the books let me know what you, your thoughts are on lucian i love lucian i think he's a great character i would love a spin-off book with him um i don't understand like how to visualize him because obviously he's got like one metal eye but i just think he's really i don't know i just i love him and he's gone through so much in his life and i really really like lucian um, so like I said, they went on like this quest thing with these, were they like the cousins of the king? Very, very vague. Don't remember the names because the names in this, apart from like the easy ones, I just, I pronounce them wrong in my head. I say them wrong out loud. They just go with my head. So we've got these two, there's a girl and a boy and they're just not very nice people. Um, and they are like going along the wall with them to see what entry point is the best so we then find out that these two girl this girl and the boy have been putting like poison in their food which has obviously prevented Feyre's powers from being as powerful as what they were she's been um communicating very slightly to reese through the bonds just sort of keeping him updated and letting him know what was going on in the spring court um and then shit hits the fan she like unleashes a whole load of whoop ass on the two people. I think she kills them. Uh, and then, I is it Ianthe? That's how I pronounced it. She goes absolutely apeshit at her, basically like controls her to break her hand and it makes it all mangled. And then her and Lucian go on the run. And basically her, her task while she was there was to obviously get information and also turn Tamlin's people and like Tam Tamlin's army on him, so like on him. Um, Cause she was obviously so annoyed at how she was treated and things like that. Um, I thought we would have a lot longer in the spring court than what we did. We only had like a couple of chapters um so i went into it thinking it would be there a lot longer and she'd be undercover a lot more but no not at all um so then lucian went on the run with her which i'm really happy that he did i didn't think he would um because he is very loyal to tamlin obviously tamlin has been there for him when his family broke apart um and i'm really happy that he went with her on the run we obviously run into his brothers then fight and then they get taken back to Valaris because I think it's Cassian I don't think Reese is there he's in Highburn I think sorry this is so vague uh, but if you're watching this you just want to like know my thoughts don't you as opposed to like a proper review and step by step um so I liked it I did find that the start was quite slow um but it was just nice to be back in the world it was nice to like have all the characters again and see like more and Amran and Azrael and Cassian and just have them all back together and also have Lucian there and then also we had um Feyre's sisters there what are your guys's thoughts and opinions on um the sisters I you know what I don't really care for them and I know that um A Court of Silver Flames follows Nesta and Cassian but I'm gonna say it I don't really I liked Nesta more I, find, I found Elaine really, really annoying. Is that just me? I don't know. I know they went through like a really difficult, traumatic time. And Elaine was supposed to get married before everything happened. And the guy that she was engaged to, like, hates Faye and all of that. And obviously, I get, I get all that. But I just found her very whimsical and very annoying. Whereas at least Nesta was, like, blunt, straight to the point you know exactly what she's thinking and feeling and she does not hold back and she's very like cutthroat and i did like that about her um whereas elaine i don't know are we gonna get more development from her obviously i know what happens at the end of the book and she just kills the king um but it didn't really redeem her for me um, and also speaking of elaine whilst we're here because i probably won't get back onto her again how do we feel about like i predict a love triangle between Azrael? Elaine and Lucian even though Lucian is her mate and as much as I want Lucian to like get his happy ever after I also see her with Asriel and I think it is it Asriel Asriel um and I think that's a really interesting dynamic I don't really want that as a dynamic because I like both men on their own and I don't want to be team either or 
I want them all to be happy. Um, I don't even know if that will be a thing, but that's just something that I picked up on. Um, and what was the other thing that I wanted to pick up on? Whilst I'm talking about Azrael, Adriel, um, when we found out the reveal about more and how there's been like this banter, sexual banter, chemistry between more and Azrael, and Azrael is in love with more from what we can tell. However, more I don't know if she's bi or if she is a lesbian. I'm not 100% sure. I can't remember. I think she is a lesbian and she loved a woman that was from, oh, was she, she loved a woman that was back in the day and she thought about her all the time and she sleeps with men and she sleeps with Cassian to keep Asriel away because she loves him so much as a friend she doesn't want and she knows that he feels deeper and she doesn't want to lead him on so she does all these horrible things to make him turn the other way and he still doesn't he's still very loyal to her uh, and just seeing that extra depth about more as a character and the ins and outs of obviously these people have been together for like 500 years and there's so many different layers that we still have only just scratched the surface on and I felt really sorry for, I feel sorry for all of them. Um, right, getting back onto it. So obviously we're back in Vela Velaris, Velaris, however you want to bloody pronounce it. Um, and we are obviously figuring out about the war allies, who's going to be on the side. They send out the letters or the invitations so they can all meet and like hash it out and be like, look, this is a situ. Are you on our side? Are you not? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and because of the war, they go to the bone carver. I didn't think we'd see him again, and obviously we did. And they basically wanted him to come and fight and protect and be on their side. Um, but he wanted them to go and get the mirror. I didn't understand the whole mirror scene. Um, I know I'm speaking about this in very like different points because he asks to see the mirror. A whole load of shit happens, and then we come back to the mirror. But you basically people that go to get the mirror either go like mental or like stuff happens to them and they never recover because uh, of what they see in the mirror but you end up seeing your true self and you saw this weird like was it like a furry tiger beast thing and I can't I didn't really understand it I can't visualize it when I think of a mirror I think of a mirror in Harry Potter when like he sees his family <laughs> so I'm imagining that but with like a beast inside like it's very very odd um and then when she gave him the mirror at the end it was like oh i don't need this i just wanted you to prove yourself did he die i can't remember sorry this is very like all over the place um we also saw the, we also saw the library with the priestesses and I loved that. It was like a little sacred place where Reese has like taken all of these women that have had struggles within their life and he's made like a little safe haven for them. However, the two ravens come in that, and Elaine is obviously talking, we know she's a seer and Elaine was talking about like a black and a white bird or something and we're like, what are you talking about? Like she's people think that she's gone crazy from having received powers from the cauldron then we find out that she's the seer um, and so these two people from the king manage to infiltrate Valaris and then they also get into the library and they are hunting Nesta I don't think they're hunting Feyre I think they're just hunting Nesta because she's got so many powers from the cauldron um, so when that happens and we see the monster, we don't see the monster, but we hear the monster strike a bargain for wanting company and things like that. I really liked that aspect of, it was quite spooky, like you can't look at him, like it'll give you nightmares and all of that. Sorry, I was watching the bin men run up and down with the bins. Um, like I really liked that aspect, I thought it was really, really, really clever. The fights, like art battle scene in the summer court. The summer court gets so much shit. We were in the summer court, was it in the first book? No, it was the second book. Um, and I really like Tarquin. Um, and we see obviously this massive bloodbath and the attack. And I love, we finally see like their true powers, like the Cassie and Azrael and Reese and more. We see their like true powers come where they literally just can turn armies like into like 
red black dust and i think it was really cool and i like how even though Feyre struggled like she really just got involved and was like they were like beheading people and all of that and i was like yes like get involved i also really like the scene with the meeting of the other like high lords who meet is it hellion helian um i can't remember their names oh that was it so we've got helian we've got eris which is lucian's brother who else have we got in here? Thesan, Thesson. So many weird names. And because there's Baron, we don't like him, I know that much. Um, because there's so many weird names, I find it really difficult to like remember them. But I really liked the meeting like around the table and they tried to discuss things and try to make alliances to go into the battle. And then Tamlin rocks up and he says some really like provocative stuff about Feyre, which it just isn't necessary. Like they're talking about like saving their lands and their people and coming together, and he just keeps throwing shade. However, he does redeem himself and I didn't like, like I've said previously, I didn't hate Tamlin um, in book two. I feel like he was just very like misguided and he did some not very nice things, but I don't think he deserved like all the hate that he got, um, like from the community. But he does redeem himself in this one. I thought he would. And I like him. I feel really sorry for him and I, I don't, I'm not bothered about having a spin-off with him, um, but I'm really happy that he redeems himself, like he saved Favourite and he got involved in the war and brought his like, his army and um, when he was in the camp, when they went to go and rescue Elaine, again Elaine, boring, um, it was Elaine yeah it was i just i don't know he was there and like he was undercover and he like gave her that gust of wind when she tried to escape and all of that and i was just like yes like you've redeemed yourself and then at the end when there was the letter i completely forgot about that um and she like wrote him a letter or, or something and it was like just be happy and i was like you you are a good person i have just had i've just had to have a quick um memory card switch around so Apologies if it's in a slightly different position and the lighting slightly different. Right, I'm just going to neck my coffee and then I can carry on chatting as I was. Um, some things that shocked me was when um, Jury and so they went to the human lands to Elaine's like ex fiance if you want to call him that. Can't remember his name. They basically went there to basically tell them to protect themselves and they had spent a long time, well, after this. Again, sorry, skipping timelines, but I'm just going to word from it as I remember it, because if not, I'll forget to then re-mention it. Um, they spent loads of time, like, winnowing people out of villages to try and save them and, and make, like, a new community of, like, the humans, because we know that Highburn wants to kill them and do X, Y, and Z to them and not spare them at all and use him for his own good, whether it be slaves and all of that. So when they go to visit this, like, I imagine, like, a big castle. Um, it's, like... Fort Knox and when they go to visit him we see Jury in there I was like what on earth is he doing there and then we find out that he is on the on like the good side I did not see that coming I was very shocked by that because obviously we had the scene at the end of Akamath when he's he caught them by the cauldron and he took them in and he wasn't very nice and all of that and we thought he'd gone crazy from being in um Amaranthas ring and all of that because she like kept his eye in his in her ring so then to find out that he is on their side and he's like playing a really really deep dark game of like being next to the king and gained his trust to then stab him in the back didn't see that coming read that that like scene a couple of times because I just couldn't believe it didn't didn't really understand it still probably don't um, I do read this book and I'm like, yeah, this is really good. But then I'd say 30% of the time, I'm like, don't know what I've just read, but it's still really good. Really, really liked that twist. And then we also see that the fact that they're going to the war and they need help because the they do really well on like the first stage and they keep moving around, like following armies and stuff. And for some reason, Feyre is like, right, I'm going to go and like get help from the, I call it the Surreal because that's how it's written 
could be wrong, could be cereal, but I don't think that is. Either way, she goes to get help, and I'm like, why are you going on your own? Like, this is really annoying. I know everyone's down in the war and all of that, but still, like, don't do that. Um, and then we see Ianthe again. Again, don't really like her. Farrah leads her into the, the Weaver's cottage, likes that, got a lot of time for that. We also find out that the Weaver is like sisters, a sister to the bone carver. Again, didn't see that coming. Um, and then the cereal gets gets killed. And that was really, really sad. I, I imagine the cereal to look like Voldemort, um, but we like we like the cereal and they it really cares for Feyre and even though it's supposed to be like quite like a scary thing like it's it's not and I just I felt really sad and she obviously spent a long time being like I'll help you blah 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 and it's like just, just go like you you could die at any minute like this thing is gonna die you're not gonna save it like just keep moving um and then one of the high fey I think it's Healy and Heli and whatever his name is comes and gets her and everything's fine um, and then that's all the notes that I've got because then I think from then on we just had going to rescue Elaine from the king's camp and then she couldn't leave that innocent girl behind so then she she went and got him or got her and then she was like trying to trying to fly and that was when Tamlin like sent the gust of wind and that was very stressful um, and then it was just the war where they were losing a lot and even though they had the weaver, they had the bone carver, they had, I think it was called Bio tracks or something, or something tricks, the thing that was living in the library. They got that. Um, and even though they had like all of these really powerful things and powerful people with all of these, these powers, obviously having Reese and X, Y, and Z, they were still losing because of how many people Highburn had. And, they obviously had the cauldron um and then oh my god i just just remembered about the cauldron um they then devised the plan to get um amarin it was originally going to be all four sisters um all four of them so amarin Feyre, and then the two sisters to get to the cauldron and then they thought no we don't need the sisters like you go and distract him the king and we'll go me and amarin will go to the cauldron and then when there was the scene when it looks like Amarin had betrayed Feyre I could not I could not get my head around that obviously we know that she didn't in the end and she sacrificed herself um but yeah that was that was intense um the killing of the king like I thought Cassian I, I didn't think Cassian was gonna die because obviously I knew the books were like other books were coming out about them um but I think if I hadn't have known that and I read this when this came out I would have thought that Cassian was gonna die um what else when the dad came didn't really understand that um when like he came with the fleet with the there's like I said there's so many different aspects and so many different people because it goes so far back um in like the history because obviously these people have been around for like 500 years so the missing army and was it draken or draken however you want to pronounce it they came back and it was just a lot going on and a lot for me to like mentally visualize but i still love the story um and then like reese like shape shifted into this weird fucking thing and then everything like just wrapped up and it was fine. But then they had to put the cauldron back together and then Reese sacrificed himself and then Reese died. I wasn't really upset when Reese died because I knew he wouldn't stay dead. I just, she couldn't kill him off. She, of course she couldn't, she couldn't. Um, so then when she was like, give everyone like the, you know how obviously Faye was like resurrected and made back into like a fairy after she died in the first book, everyone like, gave a bit of themselves again to save Reese, and then when he came around he like joked and stuff I was just like I don't know I didn't really I didn't love that bit if you know what I mean it was okay I'm glad he didn't die but it just felt a bit meh and he like kept being like really jovial about it also when he was dying and how she didn't realize that until she turned around he was like dead on the floor and I was just like you're a fucking idiot um 
and so again questions so does the cauldron now answer to her because she like molded it back together and they've now put it on that um island where those uh, that army lived for so long and tried to stay out of the way like i said i've got loads of questions i don't know what's going to happen what's going to happen with the wall obviously it was left where they kept having conversations about x y and z is the wall going to come back up is it going to stay down like what do they want to do um and like how is it all going to work Amarin came back really happy about that i didn't think she would but she did um and she's now like a like a normal high, like high fae and i really like the fact that she's back because i love the little team it just felt like it ended off in a very full circle complete happy way but with loads of questions left happy with the book i'm glad i read it i loved it like i said i'd give it five stars um it was just i found it very information heavy i found it very like i said very political and for someone that this is my first like fantasy series it's like a fantasy romance isn't it it's the first one that i've read and it was quite a lot for me to get my head around i do want to read more ones that i've got on my list is I want to read the Jennifer L. Armand Trout from Blood and Ash, I think it's called. I really want to give that a go. Um, and then I've got a couple more on my Kindle, like, samples that I've downloaded, but I can't remember what they're called. But that's the next one that I really want to focus on. Um, so if you've read that, leave me a comment below, let me know. If there are any other series that you think I should give a try, I've probably known about them, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Leave a comment below. I do still need like easy fantasies to get into because I do find it quite difficult um, but I absolutely loved this. I would recommend it to so many people and I have and the people that I've recommended it to have loved it. Some people not so much and they just found the first book mediocre um, but it's such a great series and I just love it and I'm so happy that I read it. Um, and I can't wait to read the other two. I'm not going to read them anytime soon. I'm going to put them on the back burner, maybe get to them by the end of the year, if not next year. I don't want to binge it. Um, I've still got the Throne of Glass. I've got all of those now to work my way through. Um, and I've also got Crescent City, House of Blood and Earth, whatever it is. I've got that on my shelf as well. So I'm really happy that I now finally like Sarah J Mass. If you've read Throne of Glass, let me know. I've only got up to book two. And then when it went a little bit weird at the end, I was like, nah, not for me. But then again, that was also like four or five years ago. So I might be into it now. Um, so yeah, leave me your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your feels. Um, sorry if this one was quite rambly. I know it hasn't been as structured as my other ones, but I should have filmed it straight away, but we were on Easter half term and I just didn't have the time. Um, because obviously P was here and all of that. And now Florence is sleeping. I have my chance to film. So I'm going to wrap it up. Heat up my coffee. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you all in my next one.